welcome to another episode of India Detailed. Today, let's get to know about the life post the Vedic era in detail. As we've seen in the previous episodes, the Aryans lived in the Sapta Sindhu region after the downfall of the Indus Valley civilization, which we call the Vedic Age. The second urbanization is a long-term socio-economic transition in the lives of the people living in India during 20th century BCE to the 6th century BCE. More on that in a bit. simply because it was the second time that this region underwent urbanization. Now let's take a look at the word urbanization. What does it take for a region to become urbanized? A surplus of commodities. Let's say a farmer in a village has extra wheat. Another farmer has a surplus of corn. What do they both do with their extra grain? They exchange it with each other. Which leads us to factor number two. When people trade, they trade not just goods, but also each other's ideas about religion, art and technology, technology being our factor number three. Technological developments like say the discovery of iron led to the sophisticated machinery like a better plow which lead us back to the first factor. All of this prosperity made people economically stable and they moved to or established cities to further improve the quality of life and basically formed what we call today an urban complex. So people started living in urban pockets instead of rural clusters. These were probably the people primarily living in the Indus Valley who shifted further and started living in the plains of the river Ganga and Yamuna. Now let's talk about the Mahajanapadas. These states too were formed slowly and over a prolonged period of time. But at least by the 6th century BCE, these 16 states had taken their final form. The main sources that tell us about these states are Buddhist and Jain texts which were contemporary to the Mahajanapadas. Panini, who was a linguist and a grammarian of this period, classified these great states into two types. We must also note that there were many other states at that time, apart from the main 16, but only the most prominent ones were given the prefix of Maha. The difference between republics and oligarchies? Oligarchy is when the system is governed by a few elite or powerful people, and a republic is when the system is governed by elected representatives. Anga was located on the banks of river Ganga near the present day location of Bhagalpur, Bihar. There was a natural boundary provided by river Champa between Anga and the rivaling Mahajanapad of Magadh. Kashi was a wealthy and a prosperous republic of ancient India. The capital, Varanasi, was bounded by two rivers, Varuna in the north and Asi in the south. Kosal was a mighty empire which was divided into two parts by the ancient river Sharayu. In the earlier stages of its formation, Kosal was engaged in a conflict with King Ajata Shatru of Magadh. Vrijji was located in the modern-day Muzaffarpur district of northern Bihar. It was administered from the capital city of Vaishali. Malla was near the present-day location of Nalanda district in Bihar. Malla was eventually annexed by Magadh soon after Buddha's death. Chedi was actually the name of one of the ancient tribes in India and one of the branches of the Chedis found a royal dynasty in the region of Kalinga. Watsa was situated on the banks of the river Yamuna. It was ruled over by the famous king Udayan from the capital city of Kaushambi. Initially a monarchy, Kuru later on became a republic and was administered from the capital city of Indraprastha. Panchal was located around river Ganga, which divided it into North Panchal and South Panchal. The famous city of Kannauj was also situated in this kingdom. Matsya is said to be located in present-day Jaipur. It was ruled over by the legendary king Virat from the capital city of Virat Nagari. Surasena was located around the banks of the river Yamuna. The Greek accounts have other names for this place. They called Surasena as Surasenui and Mathura as Mathura. There's been some confusion regarding its actual location. Both Afghanistan as well as the Deccan region have been suggested as plausible sites. Avanti was an important kingdom of western India. It was ruled over from the capital city of Mahishmati, Gandhar. Its present-day location has been suggested to be near Peshawar and Rawalpindi. 
It has been suggested that Kamboj was located near the northwestern region adjacent to Gandhar, Magadh. It was one of the most prominent states of all the 16 Mahajanpads. It was administered from the capital city of Patliputra. Now, with these 16 states, there were many other small autonomous clans too. King Bimbisar is considered to be the first ruler of Magadh. He founded the Haranika dynasty. He invaded the state of Anga and annexed it to expand the territory of Magadh. He was a contemporary of Mahavir and Buddha and was later probably killed by his own son, Ajatashatru. Ajatashatru also expanded his territory and annexed nearly 40 republic states and autonomous kingdoms. Eventually, out of the 16 Mahajanpadas, only two remained. Afterwards, the Shishunaga dynasty started ruling Magadh, but was overthrown by the Nanda dynasty, which was overthrown by the Maurya dynasty, and which was overthrown by the Shunga dynasty, and so on. So that was all about the Mahajanpads and India post the Vedic era. Hope you liked this episode. 